Thought I'd let you know that there is a complete thread on this whole topic on my Twitter page. It is at Luxury the Next Raw in the end. Trap Value Area, uh, a complete thread here, and you can go through all the written format of this if you want. But I thought I'd make a detailed video example for you all today, so let's get into that now. So we'll head over to Exo Chart, and to begin with, we're going to typically start off with this main panel here. If we're going to be talking about trapped value area, um, obviously, when I'm using this tool, an execution trigger, because this is what this is, it's an execution trigger. I'm not just randomly executing any time I see uh, this actually appear. I'm actually only using this once it's actually got to my level of interest. So we have our level of interest, wherever that may be. It might be a series of lows, a daily level, a naked point of control, whatever it may be, right? And then when I get this trigger at the level, you know, this is just one part of it, to be honest, then you might want to execute, for example, up here, you, you have it here, but we'll, we'll get into what the actual trigger is now. So to begin with, um, this is a delta cluster. So delta cluster here um, is representing of a candlestick. In this case, I'm using this typically on the 15 minute and the five minute. Okay. And within this candlestick, you've got obviously a massively highlighted region here. And then you've got this region, which is not highlighted. Now to adjust this tool, right click chart settings. Okay. Head over to value area. And then you're going to have the value area opacity outside. So if we crank this up to like 80%, you can see how the outside of the value area actually appears. I set this to 30 or 40% to be honest, 40 is fine. Um, but just, just enough so that you can clearly see the difference between where the value area is, right? The, the actual highlighted section within a candle and where the outside of the value area is, okay? Now, the concept of this is that, right, within this candlestick, what is the value area showing us, okay? Let's just pick this candle apart here. What is the value area showing us? Um, I'll just quickly remove the text type as well for a second. The value area is showing us where the most volume has occurred within that specific candlestick, okay? Um, in this case, we're talking about candlesticks. So that is what the value area is showing us. So outside of that is typically where, you know, the least value has occurred, okay? You know, most of the value has been trapped within the value area itself. So again, that makes sense. But now we're going to be combining that alongside, for example, the candlestick close. Okay. So you can go top right, top left here, candle mode, candle settings, and we can thicken this up a bit. Well, it's like 12 if you want. Um, so we can just so we can right now see the open high low close of each of these candlesticks a lot clearer. Okay. So if I just actually hide view app as well, here we'll go to here so this is the candle we're going to be focusing on now this red candle okay now the value area being this highlighted section i mentioned the actual candlestick on the left here is the is red okay and non-highlighted section here now also within the value area note you have a point of control okay a point of control which in this case uh, poc left settings poc settings here and you can adjust the poc settings here if you want it to feel red you want a border around it yellow how bit thick do you want the border etc right Anyway, aside from that point, you've got the point of control, the value area high, the value area low, very similar to what you have within a fixed range profile or on a market profile, on a TPO, whatever it may be. Um, and that's what this is, okay, the value area. Now, alongside that, you have the candle open here, the candle close. Price has wicked up here and it the candle has closed all the way back down here. So it's closed at 34,218. Okay, you can check in the top left anyway. 34, whatever it, the close is here. It's closed down here. The value area is up here. That value area is now trapped. So the the region where the most volume has occurred within this candle is now trapped towards the upside. Okay, so it's leaving behind all of that necessary volume. Okay, so price has wicked up, left all that volume behind. Okay, and it's closed down here, left behind all that necessary volume. Okay, uh, in a very similar example, that's a bearish example where, you know, you'd look to then use that as your invalidation. Um, there's many examples of this happening and this doesn't necessarily need to time exactly time uh, the highs and lows, um, but it's very good uh, as, as a partial indicator to where you, you will see some, uh, some form of reversal. Okay, um, even here, for example, and again, at levels of interest, you know, because this will appear a lot of the time in the chart. It won't just appear all the time. Um, well, it'll, it'll appear really frequently, okay? But you don't want to be trading every single uh, instant you see of it. So, for example, here you can see you have the open, it wicks up, closes back down here, okay? And, you know, you can see this is a trap value area candle here on the 15 minute. Um, you then have another trap value area in the opposite direction, right? But it's really dependent on, first of all, market context and where you're coming up to, right? Um, my favorite scenarios are where you're seeing this at swing failure pattern levels. They are very common. Um, the time frames I'm using for this are the five minute, 15 minute, and even the session clusters. Uh, if this wants to load up here, let's see if one of these are loaded. Um, we'll let them load up. But the 15 minute, the five minute, 
right it's, it's very very common to see this on okay um there is a and i'm using this in confluence by the way with for example is there a spike in volume when you get this if if there is a spike in volume when you get this you know if the volume near it if it's higher than the relative volume okay or the average relative volume right well then and you have the trap value error that's a signal that potentially you are going to see a potential reversal something you've seen here maybe you know maybe this is a level of interest for you you've come down to for example take a intermediate low here right the candle wicks down closes back up here right and that's that's this is now your invalidation i mean this is the, the whole reason for this trade setup is to be thinking about your invalidation right this this will not only give you an entry trigger but it'll also tell you okay where are you wrong on this trade because you know price shouldn't now be deviating away from where you know uh, we've trapped value okay and you can see obviously that provided a really good move to the upside okay so it's, it's really really like that but there are a few other factors i want to point out to it and a few other nuances obviously i mentioned uh, the volume you've also got the extended delta i've done a thread on that on twitter completely um but also more importantly what is going on within the value area now um very simply right if we just pick another example here or we can just pick this example here right in this case i'm using the delta cluster there is plenty of different settings you can use here but within this delta cluster here you know you can see it's actually fairly green right uh, there's a few a lot of red down here to be honest people getting stopped out okay but fairly green within the delta cluster right what you'd want to see is a lot of more red um generally a lot more selling within the delta cluster um you know so the shading of the value area you know very very simple basic stuff almost like here like look at this example this is a very very good example where you have a trap value area. again this is dependent on your level of interest right and again uh, i must put extra emphasis onto that but you've closed up here the value area is now brightly red uh, point of controls also within there and, and you've left that away so that's a lot of people getting stopped out maybe new positions and how do you know if there's new positions coming in well what you can do is if you go to the text type open interest based short versus long new and now you can see actually are there any new positions coming in within that trap value area you know and that's another additional confluence you can add to it and again you have to be using this at your own discretion it's not mechanical in that sense although we have actually added this indicator to exo charts if, if people haven't noticed this already but if you right click chart settings um volume cs okay and then you're going to have close outside value area arrows and you can see how often this occurs very very often um and you can use this on whatever time frame you want and uh, there's a, a few additional settings here you can adjust to that but mainly personally i look at this manually okay um through where does a candle close in relation to that value area okay and this is 15 minute 30 minute whatever candlestick so if we just go over to for example delta profile again um it just depends on how you want to visualize the data itself i personally found the delta cluster volume profile will be quite clean on this as well so you can clearly see where the most volume has occurred you know you've closed outside of that you're essentially and this is something i'd like to mention you're essentially trading the breakout um of like a very in uh, minuscule volume profile you know you, you've had value here you've broken out and now we're assuming that price is not returning back into value or at least losing the point of control before seeing a move up now something to also note this is really good here because this reminds me to talk about it um right so price is closed outside of value here this is your value area and, and this lowers your invalidation but you don't always have to use the low right this now point of control becomes significant in my opinion if you're losing this point of control then the likelihood is you're revisiting that low um but sometimes rather than having my stop below the absolute low of a move i can have it below the point of control below the high volume node etc now that is really important to know so hopefully that makes sense um the other thing to note is the ticks this obviously the value areas themselves will depend on what tick settings you have there will it will change up right so it depends on volatility and so on and so forth um find what works for you and, and rock with that uh but that's really about it to be honest i think hopefully this makes it really clear on how the trap value area works again it must be at your levels of interest okay um, again be thinking about what's going on within that value area uh, and there's so many different threads on this that i've published onto twitter x thread whatever i'm um, going into the nuances of this because it's really really important to not just be randomly using this um you know thinking about where and this is really good for reversals and that that's mainly what i'm using this for so hopefully you've found this valuable uh, check out the twitter at luxury the next round the end uh, thank you for watching